Hi, this is Anne from The Useless Crafter. So today we're doing Selena, it's off the mat. She's gonna be 26 inches and she looks amazing. And actually, I have it, hold on. <laughs> I thought I had it right here. She is a labor of love. It is so many pieces and she's just absolute perfection. And look how big she is next to me. So even at 26 inches, because she's, um, usually if you do something 30 inches, the height is 30 inches and maybe the, the length is only 20 inches or so, like right around there. This one is because it's a circle, it's just as wide. So it's really, really big. So look at that, she's amazing. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I did the assembly video this morning and I had to cut it short. I, the video, I don't remember how long the video is, but I pieced it together so you could see what it looks like and kind of talked you through what to do. And so I'm gonna give you more tips and pointers here with this video as well, but it took a couple hours. There's no way I could have videoed that whole thing. And of course there were issues. I added, I wanted to be special and added rhinestones to do the earrings right here. And literally the last rhinestone fell off the little tacky tool that you do to pick it up. And it had glue on the backside, of course. It fell and it landed glue side down on her face. Ah, uh, so I had to recut the face. Anyway, it's just, it was so many pieces. And even though I'm gonna show you today, right now, I did the rows, like these are individual pieces the way they have it here, right? Every one of these strands um, is a separate piece by itself. And what I did with the red was I actually put it underneath the black and so I did the red as one piece and it was, Still so much work. So, all right, I don't know if, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do this video. I wanna show you an overview of what it looked like at the end so that you understand what I did. Okay, so the first thing is, here's her, her face and the circle, right? I wanted to make sure that the circle was going to fit and not require any seams because you have a break right here, but this piece is pretty long as well as this piece. So I think what I ended up doing was, um, let's ungroup this for just one second so you can see what I did. And is it not ungrouping? Oh, it's cut and print. Okay, sorry. I should not have done that. Um, Hold on, let me flatten this again. I'll show you in a second. I basically moved her up a little bit higher so that um, less of the circle was showing. And so that way it, I was able to make sure that if I went diameter, like sideways, like diagonal, um, that I would be able to fit this on a mat. So, all right, let's start talking about this file. So did it? it didn't flatten, so let me see. I know this is a big file, lots of pieces. Um, you know what, I might just delete this just to clear some of this space. Okay, so keep in mind what she looks like, right? So you can see here's the breakout of the pink. So these pieces are big. Now for everything else, I use 12 by 12 cardstock. I cheated a little bit because I just didn't want any more seams. So what I did with th this, and see this is, you know, it's it's a big piece. Um, I did it on 12 by 24 cardstock um, because there were already gonna be seams in the black right here. I just didn't want any more right here. <laughs> so very rarely do I use 12 by 24, but this is a really good reason to use it. All right, here is the, the background, or actually it's not even a background because it doesn't show. If you remember, the way it looked is you have this circle and you have Selena. You don't have an outline that we usually do when we do princesses or you know those characters because you have like that black outline all around. So in this case, we still wanted to do this layer. Normally, the black is our back layer, right? But because the black is such a prominent piece in this um, 
image. It's her beautiful hair. It's part of her. I wanted to make the black, and I knew there was so much black that I wanted to do black glitter cardstock. So by doing black glitter cardstock, and this is in multiple pieces, I still needed one solid background piece that all my layers can be glued and taped to on top. So that's what this is. None of this ends up showing through at all, but this is what it looks like sliced up at 26 inches. So it's, you know, this piece and this piece are big. These pieces, not so big, but it is what it is. All right, let's talk about this piece here. This is her face. And because I have black glitter cardstock, I, I, I made this black, but regular black cardstock. But I can't make it black because then it can't distinguish between my black glitter cardstock and my regular black cardstock. So I made it gray so that visually when I saw it on the mat to cut, I would know that this is regular black cardstock. All right, so what you wanna do is with the face, now I don't remember exactly where her face goes. Let me arrange and send to the front. But we do know that there's all these seams, right? So if her, if her face went somewhere like this, you'd have a seam in the mouth and through the eyebrows and through the eyes. So you always wanna make a copy of the face. So I'm gonna do it right now. You're gonna duplicate the face then on this one, you're going to go to contour and we're going to hide all because when you hide all, you're going to have just a blank full face. And keep in mind, this is going to be our black cardstock. It's This is going to sit on top of this. So any seams that we would have seen through the eyebrows, the eyes, the mouth, the nostrils, in this case, her nostrils are so tiny. They're little slits, so we wouldn't have noticed them. But the mouth is kind of big and the eyes, you know, so any seams that would have gone through here will now disappear, right? Because we would have this sitting on top of the seams and then her face would sit on top. So it would look seamless. And I, we needed to do all of this because her hair is going to have seams. So I can't wait for you to actually see it. I'm, I know I just showed you in the video right now, but if you check on my Instagram, it's instagram.com slash the useless crafter, all one word, you, you'll be able to see multiple images of this. And yes, you are going to be able to see the lines a little bit, but and I'm not saying this just because it's my work, but I feel like the black because with all of her strands being glitter cardstock, everything's so glittery, you're, I didn't really focus on the seam. And I'm usually a, a very big stickler when it comes to seams. And so you'll have to give me your, your, your feedback and let me know. Okay, so let's look at all these all of these pieces, even though this one's long, right? This one says it's 12.5 by 8.2. When you go and put it on your mat to cut, if you put it diagonally across, because that's gonna give you more length, right? It will actually fit. So nothing else besides her black hair has any seams. So that's gonna help us give a really beautiful picture because none of the pieces have it, right? So everything's gonna look amazing because there are no seams. The face doesn't have any seams um, and none of the strands. All right, so let's talk about the eyes. The next thing I wanna show you is, um, let me zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, all right. So this is what the eyes look like. The way the file came through was we had a black piece and then the white was in three individual pieces for one eye. Then on this eye, same thing, it had three white pieces. And they're kind of small because if you look, this is less than two inches by an inch. Um, so what I did instead was, and I'll show you when we actually get to it, is I took, the, I took this piece, okay, and I made a duplicate copy. And then, hold on, I can't remember if I actually, it depends on how it came through. I will look at it in a second, but what I did was, instead of these individual pieces, what I did was I made 
the white go underneath. Normally the white, the little pupil and all that stuff goes on top of the black. In this instance, I made it go under so that I can have a full piece of white. I don't have to worry about the three little, six pieces really, right? Six small little pieces. I just had two big pieces and then the black was on top. All right, let's zoom out for another second. The other thing that I wanna talk about are the two roses. There's a gold rose up here and a red rose down here. This is what ended up happening. So that this as one whole big piece is gonna go underneath the black like this. And because it's not all put together, it's hard to, to, to realize. But that helped us save about 20 some floating pieces. Instead it's one big glob, it goes underneath and you're done with the red. And same thing with this, um, this rose back here, if you can kind of imagine that. So that's all one big blob. So then we had just the individual strands that were easy to, to piece together. Now, the other thing that you may notice is this big glob right here. So the hair was actually in pieces. So this section right here, it had a strand coming straight through right here but I welded it together because I wanted her hair to only be a couple pieces. I didn't want her hair to be in 10 pieces and then trying to piece it together and tape it and whatever else. So I, in each of these sections, I wanted it small, as big as it can be that I can cut on an 11 by 11 or 12 by 12 cardstock. But, um, you know, I wanted to, have just minimal number of pieces. And this way what happens is you're gonna have a little blob right here, but this strand goes right, let me bring that to the front, arrange, send to the front. It's gonna go right over, and I know this doesn't match up because it's not lined up right here, but just imagine right here, no one's gonna know that there wasn't a little cutout for that part to dip down. So it doesn't really matter, but it helps us piece it together because there's less moving parts that we have to handle. All right, I think that is all that we have that I wanted to go over. So now what I'm gonna do is, if you can keep all this in mind, right, that's a really high level overview of all the tips and tricks. Now we're actually gonna go and do it. And so I'm just gonna move out of this one, not save this one, and actually start over so you can see how the file came over. And uh, there's still more tips and tricks. <laughs> this file was a lot of work. The whole thing is because I wanted it to look beautiful, and so I made that extra layer right in the back, and then made the black glitter cardstock and the, all the cutouts and stuff, so it was, um, it was lengthy, both in the design portion and the assembly portion. So let's view all, look at all my uploads. You get to see, I always like this, I feel like I'm sharing some secret drive so you can see all the stuff that I've been working on. All right, so let's go, here she is. So this is how the file came over. And you know, not all designers are the same and not all files are created equal. I say that all the time because if, I mean, if you, this is not your first off the mat with me, you'll know that the pieces of my princesses, for example, are usually like seven colors and they're all right here, but look at this. This is how this file came over. Look at all the pieces. I wanted to say no way to this person, <laughs> but, this, and if you can believe it, we've gone back and forth, and she's amazing, so I wanted to make this happen for her. Um, this was the best file that she sent me. So you can just imagine how the other files were. It was so disappointing how bad some of these files were. All right, so you can see this is a lot of pieces, and when you have this many pieces to keep track of, you just can't. It's too hard, it's too hard to cut these Look at the eyes. This is this is what I was talking about. I was like, there's no way I wanted to keep track of these six pieces and the other hundred pieces of her hair and whatever else. So I needed to make this the best as I could for myself. So let's get started. All right, first thing is we're gonna change the height to 26 inches. 
So she's basically 26 by 26. Look at that. So that's why it looked so big, even though it was 26 inches, because most of my princesses and most characters are slender, right? But this one was like, <laughs> okay, so here we have her. Um, and you're gonna see that I'm going to end up bringing her back in, deleting what I have, because there's so much work to do on this file. So the first thing is let's ungroup this. And you'll notice that all the strands, all the individual pieces, they are literally individual pieces on this. So we can't, we just can't really have that. <laughs> so let's see if I can, un so here we can still ungroup. You can tell because it's available to ungroup. So let's move this out and um, let's see. Okay, so her face still isn't ungrouped, so we'll move the face over. So let's deal with the face first, okay? So I'm gonna move it over, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. All right, so this is her face, and for some reason the earring came over. Don't worry about that. Okay, so the first thing that I did is, you see all the white, so let's ungroup everything. And it's all sitting on top of an of a empty face. Let me see if I can show you that. So see, the problem with this is, the nice thing is it's seamless, right? Because at 7.53, 11.6, this was deliberate. That's why I chose 26 inches because I wanted to make sure that the face was gonna be seamless. So I had it come as close to 11.5 as I could. Now. When you have a blank face like this, that means you, as the person who assembles it, has to put this down perfectly in order for it to still look like her face. I don't want that kind of pressure. So let's un undo this for a second. So I ended up, uh-oh, let's hope it lets me do it. Okay, so what I ended up doing was I sliced everything out so that I had so I knew where to put the eyebrows, where to put the eyes, the nose, and all of that. Now, the other thing I did is, do you see how this um, eyebrow is at the edge? I did move this in just a little bit so that it would be enclosed and it's in the face. So that way I can make that duplicate copy of the face, if you remember that. Okay, so this is how you make the, the cuts. We're gonna have to do this individually. So we're gonna take one eyebrow, and her face and we're gonna slice it out so you can see this was a lot of work <laughs> um, and I'm not saying that to justify the price that I charged <laughs> but it's it, in order to do this file you have to come up with these things otherwise you're just gonna die all right so I move the eyebrow out I want this eyebrow right because that's gonna go on top of the face um, I'm gonna put this face arranged, send to the, to the back again, because I need to do this for every other piece on here. So now I'm gonna grab this other eyebrow and slice. And then I'm gonna move the eyebrow out. Then I'm gonna take this and arrange, send to the back again. And I am going to slice out the eye this time, one eye. And remember, I wish I could grab the whole thing and just slice it, but you can only slice two things at one time. So I'm slicing the face is one image and the other image is whatever one that we pick. So I'm picking this eye for instance, I'm gonna hit the shift key and I'm gonna grab the face. And I obviously didn't grab just that because slicing is not available. So let's go back out. Let's refresh our piece. Okay, so what I want is this eye. Okay, and scroll down. I'm gonna use just my scroll bar. And then I'm gonna hit the shift key and grab the face and slice. But I still, I'm gonna leave the eye there. I'm gonna leave everything there because I need both these pieces to work on the white part, if you remember. Okay, so I'm gonna take this phase and arrange, send to the back. So you can see this is a lengthy process, right? 
but she does, she looks amazing. So there's that. <laughs> all right, let's do this eye. Scroll all the way to the bottom, hit the shift key, grab the face, and we're gonna slice. And we're almost done with this portion because we're gonna take the lips and hit the shift key and grab the face and slice. And then we just need to slice out the nostrils. Can you imagine slicing or not slicing this, but um, so arranged sense the back, sorry. Um, cutting out these little slender pieces for the nostril and then trying to tape it down but not get any residue on the face. No way, that, that is the worst idea ever. So <laughs> let's grab this nostril and um, scroll down and grab the face and slice. And the nostrils, once you once you do the nostrils, you can just get rid of it, right? We don't need it at all because the black from below is gonna come through. So let's take the face, arrange, send to the back so that we can grab the other nostril. Okay, we grabbed it. Hit the shift key. Let me see if I can grab the face here. And slice. Okay, so now I'm gonna move the face completely out of the way. We don't need this. We need the lips. Now I think for the lips, let's arrange and send to the back. I'm pretty sure I sliced out the teeth. Um, arrange, send to the back. Okay, there. So, um, no, oh, no, I did, I did. Okay, so I'm moving out the teeth, but I want this cut out so that I don't have to worry about where the teeth actually go. If I slice this out and I am keeping this black piece, because this black piece we're gonna cut out, this white fits perfectly where it's supposed to, and then I know where to put it because my lips are gonna have an opening, okay? So that's how this is gonna look like this. That way you don't have to try to, because if you're slightly off with the lips, slightly off with the eyes, a little bit off with the nostril, like just a little bit, with all of that added together, your face is gonna be jacked. <laughs> Trust me from experience. That's why you need to slice it out so that you have a marker of where things go. Okay, so the mouth is all done. The nostrils we decided we didn't need. The only thing we have left on here is to figure out the white of the eyes. Okay, so this is how I did it. Um, let's arrange, send to the back. I remember what I did now. Okay, arrange, send this one to the back. We don't need this these cutouts, so I'm gonna move it. Same thing with this one. Same thing with the eyebrows. So I'm just moving this out of the way so I can delete it. Okay. All right, so what I did with the white, because I didn't want to slice out six times of the white, what I did was I grabbed all of the white here, so hit shift and grab all six pieces of the eyes. And it's so slow right now. Is it not grabbing? I want to weld it so that the six pieces of the eyes become, oh, see, it's seven. Look how small that little dot is. That's ridiculous, right? <laughs> all right, hit your shift key. Let's grab all these pieces. And there's still more. This one. And I think that's part of the smile, okay. So those pieces I'm going to weld together. I'm turning them into one piece so that I can slice one eye at a time. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm gonna grab it like this. And no, not yet, hold on. I actually wanna make a duplicate before I start slicing. Just so that we have it in case I'm making a mistake somewhere. <laughs> All right, so with the black, we're grabbing one eye and the white and we're slicing. 
And then we're going to do the same on this side. Slice. Okay, so let me show you what the new black looks like, right? The new black is this. It has the cutouts, okay? On this one as well. Okay, so I can get rid of this. Now, these pieces, what I want to do is I want to grab both of these pieces and I'm going to weld it and I'm going to change it to white. So those are my white pieces. Arrange, I'm going to send it to the back. So look at my black. So my black, there's one little piece there. I just got rid of it. So watch, when you go to contour, I'm not going to keep track of this little piece right here. So I'm going to pretend it never existed. That's what my, that's what it looks like. Okay, so here are my white pieces, full pieces, right? Not the eight pieces that I would need to go keep track of two, you know, super small pieces. And it's just going to work like this. It's going to go behind and it's going to fit perfectly and it's going to show the white. Same thing with this side. Okay, so that's the face. We are done with the face. Oh, well, actually, now that we, now that I made slits in these, you need to make a copy of this and then contour, hide all, Oops. and here's my blank face that's going to cover up all the seams that may come through here, because if you remember, look at the, um, well, actually the eyes will cover, will be covered completely because it has the black and the white. So it's just the eyebrows. Um, but you can, I ended up not cutting these eyebrows. I let the black from this show through here. So I didn't, it was just two less pieces that I didn't want to deal with. So there you have it. Okay. <laughs> um, face is done. Let's go back over here. Now the earrings. So you see how I kind of like messed with this. So what now I have this piece, I also want to slice out the face. So just like what we did with the face, we want to slice out all these individual pieces so that you have a marker for places. Otherwise, check this out. Look at this. All of these come out. Are you going to know where to put it? And how about this rose recreating this rose? No way, right? So that's kind of what we needed to do in order to make it work. So everything that we just did for the face, we need to do for the whole round image. So, and because I already moved this stuff, this is what I ended up doing is, once I worked on one piece and I knew this was gonna be 26 inches, I would delete everything that I didn't work on, right? So the face is now all done, but now I need to upload it again and now I need to work on everything else in the bigger image. So I'm only going to do this a few times because it's the same process over and over. Um, but I want to show you first before I... So we bring her back in. She's in the proper place. And this time I'm going to slice her face out of the image so we know where to put the face. So it's just one step at a time. I know. 20... And that's also why I always encourage you guys to, um, is when you make your image, to not just use this button right here and make it as big as you think you want it. Okay, that looks about good. Well, no, because if you ever need to go back and recut something or change something, like if you remember when I first started, I said that the red, the rose, was all together welded as one, right? Well, when I went to piece it together, one of the pieces was like, uh, actually a few of these pieces didn't turn out properly so what I ended up doing was I went back in and I had to slice these out so it's so much easier when you know that the image is exactly 26 inches you can type it in because you're never going to be able to recreate exactly how big it is and the other thing is you may think you can but the problem is once you start dissecting this image and pieces are all over the place like if you remember what this looked like my canvas looked like when we first started this video, you, you can't even go back and say, well, what was my original size? 28.34, like, uh, 
<laughs> right? So always use whole numbers so that you can go back when you need to. Okay, so here she is. What you need to do is you got to just ungroup. And I know it takes so long. Don't mess up on me. And I'm not even going to do the grid and everything because I feel like the video is so long. Um, but I hate skipping steps like that. So let me think about that while we're doing this. Okay. So we got to keep ungrouping. Now the face, I don't care about the eyes, the mouth and all that, right? I want just the general outline of the face. So what you can do is this. So from our new image, I'm going to grab the face and I'm just going to weld it. Everything, the eyes, the eyebrows, all of it. I don't care. So I'm going to take this and scroll down till I get to my black hair. There she is. Hit the shift key and slice. So now I know exactly where my face goes. And what's nice about this too is see what before when you were thinking about slicing, it just looked like a lot of black to slice. But look, when we slice like a little piece right here or a little piece right here, it's gonna be so minimal that you're not gonna notice it. And that's kind of what happened with the project is there, while there is a lot of black, some of the black is also still very thin that we could you know, easily work with. All right, so once we do this, um, let's do this too. Let, I think I ended up moving it down like this to slice this out. So let's slice out the pink. And where is our black? There she is. Hit the shift key. Actually, before we do that, okay, hold on. I'm gonna grab this whole thing, okay? And I'm gonna duplicate it. I know this file is getting crazy, but we have to do all these steps. I know I keep saying that, but, and like I said, the assembly portion took me hours today. Normally I can do, I my videos are about 40 minutes to an hour and you usually see it's done. Um, and today it was hours and hours. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna take that copy and I'm gonna weld it together because this is my back layer that everything's going to go on top of. Now that I know where the circle is going to be and I know where Selena is going to be, um, let's see if it welded for me. I know it's acting really, really slow right now. Okay, perfect. So if you think about it, this is my welded piece and it looked like I caught some other pieces over here. So we can easily get rid of that. Go to contour for a second. And let's hide all. I only want this big piece. So this is going to be my template, basically. I'm gonna slice this up and piece it back together so that every all the other colors are gonna sit on top of this background, okay? So we'll move that for a second. Now what we wanna do is we wanna grab, ah, oh, no, undo. I want her back where she's supposed to be. And look at all those pieces, I know this file. Okay, so let's do this. Let's grab her and scroll down till we get to our pink circle. Hit the shift key and grab this and slice. So now we have our pink pieces, right? So let's, I'm gonna move it over a little. Now with the pink piece, we don't need the face. So I will definitely right now just contour that out. We don't need the face and we don't need the earrings. We need this little, oh, it came with it, okay. So this is our pink. It's one big piece here. Um, this is just what it is. These two little pieces, you need them. 
this is all here. These two, you can't connect them. So this is our pink, but it's pretty easy. They're big pieces. All right, let's go back to this image and still work on it because we've got all those strands and all that red and stuff that we need to deal with. So arrange, send to the back. So now what you want to do is literally every strand you want to slice out so you know where the strands go. I'm not going to do that for you. Um, but I will actually, so just pretend you did all that. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to build the grid right now with you so that we can slice up this big background. And then we can also slice up what's going to be the remaining of the black. Once you slice out all the strands, if you remember what it looked like on the other on the other canvas. It was more of like a skeleton, right? And then we're gonna slice that up. So let's do that now because some of these strands aren't even showing up right now. It's so weird. Oh, I see what happened. Okay, the because the pink went through, so we actually need to delete all of this right here because this is now a compromised, is that gonna be a problem? No. So let's delete that and this, and you gotta bring her back in and slice everything out, okay? So I'm not gonna do that because we said we weren't gonna do that. What we're gonna do right now though is we're going to build our squares to slice up this big guy because right now we can't do anything with it, right? It's 26 inches by 26 inches. So I'm using, and I did use 12 by 12 cardstock. So let's bring in our first square we're gonna change this to 11 by 11. And you're just gonna plop it down somewhere here. Then we're gonna to go to the position feature and we're gonna to round to the nearest whole number. So 14.3 becomes 14, 0.917 becomes one. So the X coordinate is the one running across. So at 14, go down one unit and here's the beginning of our square. We're gonna duplicate it. And you want this grid because just trust me on it. When you're, when you're rebuilding this, the pieces back together, it's so nice to know that all the four corners meet up together, all the pieces fall into place. It's so much easier to put it back together. All right, this one, same thing. Go here, 25.1 becomes 25, 1.028 becomes one. We're gonna do one more and put it right here, okay. 36 and one then because these are all flushed and all perfect already you're gonna hit the shift key and go to your right hand side panel and grab all three and duplicate so we don't have to rebuild those three you just need to put this set close to this set and do the same thing change this to 14 to 12 then these three are already still highlighted duplicate and we're gonna put it down here. That's already at 14, change this to 23. Now you have nine squares completely flush with each other. Let me zoom out so you can see that. Okay, if you remember, we're not only gonna slice that background, we're gonna slice that big black image, right? So what I did was I just went over here, hit the shift key and grabbed all nine squares and duplicated it because you're gonna to need to slice this twice, right? The background or the back layer, not the background, so that everything can go on top and then also the black piece. So I'm gonna put it somewhere over here. Hopefully they're all good. Okay, in this case, we wanna go get our, here's our piece, arrange, send to the front. And now we just wanna look at this piece and make sure that the seams are all in good places. Um, and what I mean by that is, um, you're not going to want something like this, where this little tip is cut off, just a random little piece that you need to keep track of. You don't definitely don't want that. So what you want is maybe something like this, where all of these pieces are connected right here. I mean, this right here, it's still a sizable piece and some things you can't, <clears throat> you can't help. Like it's, it's going to happen the way it's going to happen. So I feel like I need to move this over a little bit because I don't want this little piece right here to be so small. Oh, and right here. All right, 
I think I know what we can do down here. And this is another reason why we build on a grid, okay? So this is all good up here. This is all good over here. But down here, we're left with just such a small piece. I think we can get rid of this. And now grab these two and move it over. Yeah, this looks good. Okay. And again, because we built it with whole numbers, 18.9 becomes 19, 22.9 becomes 23, and I didn't need to redo anything, right? And now, because this portion was smaller, thinner, I didn't need all three squares, and now this little guy and over here is all one big piece as well as this piece. Now I think this is perfect. So let's start slicing. We're gonna slice just all around, one square at a time with the white image. And in this case, when you go to actually make this, these pieces you need to turn to gray or some other color, right? Because you wanna distinguish that between, have a distinction between this and the black glitter cardstock. All right, so here we go. And you see how that piece disappeared over here? It's okay, it's a design space glitch. I've seen it many times with this um, project, type of project. As long as the piece is still there, we're good. Okay, for now, I'm gonna move this over so that you, and I'm gonna rebuild it over here so you can see it. And I'm gonna get rid of these pieces just to start clearing some space. Then we need to continue slicing. Okay. Um, oops, let me undo that. I needed to slice that still. Okay, so I'm gonna move this piece over, this piece over. Get rid of this. Oops, not that. This. And slice our remain. Oh, <laughs> let me undo that. You don't want to move it. Oh, let me get rid of this. Oh, somehow, how did that happen? Okay, that's a, I think that's a glitch. We shouldn't have had that issue. All right, let's grab, oh my God, let me undo that again. Slice off that piece. I don't know why that happened. I don't think that we, let's slice this. The only time that that would happen is if I didn't, our grid was compromised. <laughs> so that happens too. Maybe I went too fast and I wasn't paying attention. But what I would do is, oh no, here, there. Let's get rid of this, this, and this. Okay, so here is our background, our back layer, I should say. And you can see it's, what I mean about building that grid is look at these four corners right here. When we go to tape this back up, it's easy to put the four corners together the four corners over here. And then this lines up with this circle so we know where it goes. And same thing with here, like this goes right here. So you wanna build that grid so that you just know the pieces just slide in and you know where to put them. All right, I think that is it. We have this extra grid here because we needed to slice up the black. Um, I'll bring her back in, how about that? Um, or actually, what I wanna show you is Let's go to the, let's get rid of these squares because we don't need it. And I'm gonna show you the make it screen because there's still some tips and tricks there. And then we're done. Okay, so let's go to make it. Uh, why is it not supported? Which piece is too big? Oh, we need to separate out these pieces because we can't cut this the way it is. So, um, Let's bring in a square and slice it up. C 
So yeah, now this piece is good. And let's get rid of this. This piece will be good as well. Okay. All right, so let's go to make it. Just click OK. So this is our, so see, because we kept it white, this is her teeth and her earring. <laughs> but I mean, this is, all, this is the back layer. So here are our back layer pieces, right? We could start moving some of these around um, so you know that you can move it within the screen. You can also click on the three buttons, or the three dots, and move object, and you can move it to a different sheet. So if you were close to you know, being able to fit everything and you wanted to move that to over here, for instance, then you could do something like this and make sure that it all fits. But when you move things, just make sure that everything has its own space so it doesn't cut over each other. But see, you still have more room. We could add something here. So I just wanted to show you how to do that. Um, all right, her face. So this is, this is saying it's too long because it only cuts to 11 and a half inches. If you really wanted to make sure this was gonna cut well, just rotate it diagonally. And then now look, her face fits, and her face is fine. It's under 11 and a half inches. And same thing with the duplicate here. You could do something like this. Okay. Um, this is the pink piece. Now I think both of them can fit on the same one. So I'm gonna click on this one and hit the three dots, move object, and I want it on this one. So I'm gonna use one 12 by 24 sheet of cardstock. And you see it's closed. I'm just gonna rotate it. And let's see if this is gonna work. So what you need to do is it's not, oh, maybe it will work. Let me see. Oops. Oh, there we go. So it will cut on a 12 by 24 piece of cardstock. All right, we took out all the strands. So there's that process, but I think that you guys get it because it was the same process over and over. Let me know what you think. Was it, is this too hard or should I have actually done it step by step all the way through? Because if I get enough responses like that, I have the file, I can always redo it and add the longer steps to it. All right, thanks guys.